And so when we moved into a different industry, which was RFID and global supply chain for pharmaceuticals, we had learned our lesson. The problem in the global supply chain is there's a tremendous amount of fake drugs coming into the United States, mostly through the internet channels. Some of them are counterfeits and they're tainted and many of them are fake. And people know about this in this industry. They are aware of the problem, but unless somebody dies or there's a big problem with them, nobody's going to do anything. They're just going to worry about deflecting liability. So if you look at that supply chain, it's actually quite complicated. You have raw materials, you have the drug, you have the inert ingredients, for example, the pill, you have distribution, and you, have, you have retailing. It's very easy to spread blame. And so we really had learned our lesson. We realized there was nobody who had an incentive to do anything about it. And so we focused on lobbying. So we knew ahead of time what kind of technologies were required to have a minimal level of compliance. And we really focused on that. And we had a great return on our investment because we knew the kinds of RFID readers and the kinds of, of technologies that people were going to spend money on and had to spend money on. You want to really understand where's the power. And another example would be in HIPAA. These are requirements so that patients' confidentiality is guaranteed. Sounds great. Voters love it. But really, it, it really didn't achieve all that much because it was really just a pain for the industry. The, this was designed to protect the patient, but the providers, the payers, and the insurance companies were really, again, focused on getting that cost down, doing the minimal amount they had to comply. And so whenever you're in a situation where you have conflicting objectives, realistically, the one with the most power always wins, and that would be the insurance companies. So really, the insurance companies were really focused on two things, was driving the cost down on minimal levels of compliance and trying to make it so that they can lengthen the payment, the time it took for that they had to go pay the providers. And so one way to do that was to actually focus on a minimal level of compliance and to try to change the process flow so much that you actually lengthened, you actually made it more complicated. And they were able to again do that using HIPAA. That's not what the intention of the law was, but realistically, when you're working in these systems, you have to understand what's the reality of what's really going to happen. And that's how you know how to manage it. Another industry was secure computing, is that there was a new class of security technologies coming out for PCs, and we really thought that there was going to be an opportunity to, to sell more of these security technologies. There was an international standards group. They had a lot of prestigious members. And I tell you, one thing you don't, want to, you don't want to see being made is sausage and standards. <laughs> and so this group degraded into a group that was really promoting marginal technologies with no solutions because it was being run by engineers. As I said, never put engineers in charge of anything because they missed the most important point of all, was to manage compliance. Customers want security. They will not pay for it unless they have no choice which means government compliance. So what ended up happening in this case was that since there was no compliance, a lot of cheap versions of this product came out, and it was just a checkoff item. We have this security chip in there, therefore it's more secure. So really, in this case, biometrics yielded a much better return, because at least biometrics were sexy. 